Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Uh, we thank God for letting us see another day. We're in the new month, the month of June, uh, the first Sunday in June, Communion Sunday. And it's good to be alive. So much going on in the world. We thank God for all of you uh, for tuning in to the New St. John Worship Experience. We thank God for all of the conference call uh, listeners along with our Facebook watchers. We thank you that you tuned in today. Expect a miracle today. Expect God to do something uh, that you need him to do. Our God able to do anything but fail. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are praying. We are continuing to pray for one another. We're praying for our families. We're praying for our friends. We're praying for uh, the body of Christ as a whole. Let's keep each other in prayer. Even though we are shut in, guess what I've learned? I've learned that the devil is still busy than the devil. And uh, our God is able uh, to overthrow anything the devil tries to do to any one of us. We are praying for our country. Aren't we praying for our country? We are praying for the leaders of our country. We are praying for a guidance and we need God to lead and to rule over our country. So much going on. We pray for those who are praying, for, uh, are seeking, longing uh, for real positive change in this country. Uh, let us keep each other lifted up in prayer. Let's keep Sister Hawkins, Sister Mabel Hawkins lifted up in prayer. Uh, she did have surgery and she is recuperating, but we want to keep her uh, lifted up in our prayers. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, the call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Let us continue to sing God's praises. Uh, please Google this hymn. Uh, you can find it in the hymnal if you have one. Hymn number uh, 77. Come thou fount of every blessing. Amen. Hymn, hymn number 77. Come thou fount of every blessing. Let us sing this hymn of our church. Come thou fount of every blessing to thine heart to sing thy grace. Stream of mercy never ceasing. Call Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
me. Jesus taught me when a stranger wandering from, wandering from a fold of God. He to save my soul from danger. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. God, we thank you 
uh, today that you have the whole world in your hands. And we're claiming victory in the name of Jesus. God, bring change in the world. Bring change among our elected officials. Bring change even in the church. God, have your way. Move by your spirit. Move by your power. And we thank you. We thank you that we believe that it's going to be all right. Those who are listening, those who are watching, God, there are so many needs that are represented today, but God, we know that you're able to do anything but fail. So God, we just believe it and claim it by faith and that everything is going to be all right. That we would just have the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed uh, that we could speak to the mountain and the mountain has got to move out of our way. Uh, so God, we have mustard seed faith today and we believe that it's going to be all right even as we stand, even with uplifted hands and uh, we're claiming that healing is taking place. We're claiming that deliverance is uh, taking place that financial blessings are being loose in the spirit and even though we don't see it right now, God, we claim it we believe it's already done, we touch and agree with our neighbors over Facebook and on conference call God, we thank you uh, that you brought us so far God, you brought us this far and we know that you didn't bring us this far to leave us now so God, we thank you. Rule over us. Have your way in this country. Have your way in this nation. Have your way in our churches. And we thank you for what you're going to do. We claim victory. We claim that victory is already ours. It's already ours. God, we claim it right now in the name of Jesus. And so God, we thank you as we close this prayer. Uh, God, we know that you're working on our situations and that your eye is on the sparrow so we know that you're watching us. It is, it is, it is in the matchless name of Jesus that we ask it all in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen, amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Our scripture, our scripture will be read from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 16. Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 16. The first lady, uh, our technician, she can't talk much, but I uh, know you hear her clapping in the background. Amen. Uh, you may not be able to hear her, but I hear her. And then we thank God uh, for the fifth chapter uh, through the 16 verses. I'll call this the Acts of uh, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 16. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed, every one of them. And they were healed, every May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Let's affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose.
in its entirety. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our heart. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the father of the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath, under, un, Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this love. My soul, so be on thy God. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this love. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not, not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or that is thy neighbors. Lord, have mercy on us and incline this law upon our hearts. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer, my Thank <laughs> you. 
still, still, all oh, my soul shall be nearer, my God, to thee, nearer, my God, to thee. Summary of the Decalogue. Here, what Christ our Savior says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets.
they go by without praising his name, God's name is worthy to be praised. Again, to all of those who are watching this worship experience, all of the officers and members of New St. John Church, to my friends all over in Baltimore, Charlotte, in Virginia, God bless you, on the Eastern Shore, God bless you today. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching, for listening, for praying for us today. Uh, if you're turning your Bibles to uh, Acts 5 and 15, we thank God again for the First Lady and for all of the preachers, all of the ministers, the Reverend uh, Rouse, Reverend Tomlin, God bless you, and to all of New uh, St. John family. Again, we thank God for all of you. Acts 5 and 15. Uh, in so much that they brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter might overshadow some of them. Amen. That at the least the shadow of Peter might overshadow some of them. I, I want to remind us today uh, I want us to be uh, up the that I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. And because I believe in the power of God, I believe that God is still a healer. I believe that God is still a healer. Amen. Uh, many times, as some of you have heard me preach, and I've talked about at least three of the characteristics of our God. We know that God is omnipresent, that God is everywhere at the same time. Amen. He's all present. Uh, he's with me right now. He's with you right now. He's in your house. He's in my house. He's in your car. He's in my car. He's in the hospital. Uh, he's in the nursing homes. He's in all 50 states and the whole wide world. God is everywhere at the same time. I think that it is a kind of an error that we pray, Lord, go to the hospital or Lord, go uh, to the nursing homes when in reality, God is already there. He, has, he doesn't have to go anywhere. He is present with us. Isn't it good to know that you are never alone? Every now and then, I know, because we are just, because we are just flesh. Uh, and, it's, and sometimes we feel like we are alone, but the reality is uh, that God has promised never to leave you, nor you. I keep uh, reminding us of, of, of that scripture uh, that he made that promise to us and when you're at your darkest hour, you are always remember that God is with you. He never runs out on you. I'm glad that God isn't like some friends we have. You know, some friends are just uh, sunshine friends. They are just friends who are there as long as the sun is shining. But when there's a little bit of rain, you know, they are scarce and we can't find them. You know, they promise us uh, that they will stick with us through thick and thin. And when things get thick, they but I'm glad I can count on God. I can depend on God. I can depend on God because God has never left me alone. And God never failed me. He is everywhere at the same time. But not only is God omnipresent, but God is omniscient. Knows everything. God is all knowing. Our God knows our down sittings. He knows our uprisings. He knows our thoughts are far off.
but going through. God knows everything. God knows your predicament right now. He knows every detail of predicament. Even if you didn't tell him all of the details, he already knows the details of your life. Because God is all-knowing. And not only is he all-knowing, but God is omnipotent. He's an all-powerful God. I'm glad that God doesn't have some power. I'm glad that God doesn't have little power, but God has all power in his hands. Today, I again want to talk about uh, the power of God in the life of so many live and we are really applying God's power to our everyday life. I'm afraid we live not understanding that miracle working power is available to us even right now. Right now my mother is still believing that she's going to walk. Understand that right where you are, right where you are, whenever you believe, try a little. Sometimes you might be depressed, and sometimes you may feel hopeless. But I come to remind us today that God's power is real and working on the side of us. And the only thing worth living below what God has for us is not even believing and trusting God enough to even claim the miracle that you are in need of. Let me say that again. The only thing that's worse of it living below the privilege that God has in store for you is not even believing and trusting God enough to even ask and claim the miracle you are in need of right now. Right now, I want you to get it into your mind, get it into your heart, what you need God to do. Come on, you know that there are some things only God can do. If you're sick in your body, I want you just to touch the place where you're sick at today and claim your healing. I know we have doctors and we have nurses, but the truth of the matter is that doctor, the, the doctor that's over the doctor is God himself. And our God is a healer and our God is a Miracle working God. If he what he says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to what the power worketh in us. I mean, look at that. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above. If you've got the nerve to ask him, God's got the power to bring it to pass. Oh, I hope you're praying with me this morning. I feel like you are. I feel like preaching just a little while. If you can get it in your mind, you've got the audacity to ask God for the impossible.
<laughs> the Bible says if two or three touch and agree, <laughs> if we touch and agree as believing anything, <laughs> that God will do it. <laughs> oh, come on, stretch out on God today. <laughs> but today I'm asking you to stretch out your faith <laughs> on an almighty working God. And I believe today your miracle is in reach. I believe your miracle is at hand. I'm reminding of the prophet Elijah. I remember that the junior prophets were worshiping in a place that was too small. Somebody said we need a bigger place to worship. The Bible lets us know that the told them uh, to start building the church. Uh, the Bible says uh, that as the men were one man in particular uh, as he was cutting down a tree chopping that tree down uh, uh, that his axe head fell off uh, and it fell in the water. Uh, uh, they called Elijah the prophet, the man uh, Elijah asked the man, show me where the thing fell in. Uh, Elijah threw a stick in the water. Uh, his head began to flow. Uh, I want you to understand that today. Uh, the iron axe head uh, that had fallen in the water uh, began to flow. Uh, the water, ha, came to the surface of the water. Ha, Elijah told the man, ha, reach out and grab it. Ha, and that's what I'm telling some of you today. Ha, I'm telling you by faith, ha, reach out and grab it. Ha, if you need healing today, ha, reach out and grab it. Ha, if you need deliverance today, ha, reach out and grab it. If you need a financial miracle today, reach and grab it. If you need a new job today, come on and reach out and grab it. If you need God to make a way out of nowhere, reach out and grab it today. Our God is able to make your dreams come true. Send the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, the 
are the one who comes alongside to help. Pentecost, as we talked about last week, is the coming on the earth of the third person of the Godhead, of the Trinity, of the Holy Spirit, and the was sent to dwell on the inside of the heart of the believer. Fifty days after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he sends his Holy Spirit to dwell in, to live in, to abide in the heart of the believer. He is the power agent who lives in us. He helps us in our communication with God. God talks to me and I talk back to God. He's the one that helps that conversation between me and God. I no wonder the song he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever he helps us to pray he helps us to go through adversity in life, the trials and the tribulations, there's a hit that goes, preachers and teachers make their appeal, fighting like soldiers on the great battlefield, went to their pleading, my heart did yield, but all I can say, thank God, thank my God, there's something within, something within me, got a hold of the reins, something within me, I just can't explain, something within me, all that, thank God Almighty, there's something within, I want to change a little part of that, Something within is somebody within. It is God inside of us. Things and people that had the potential to drive me and you out of our mind. If the enemy flee, but they'll come in one way, but they'll flee seven different ways. I'm so glad that my God is still in charge. That's why when the waters come upon me, I know that they won't overflood me. And when the fire comes, I know I'm not going to burn. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you will receive power from on high. Uh, come on, claim that today. Uh, uh, come on, put those hands together today. Uh, and tell God, I thank you, God, uh, for the power uh, that dwells in me. Uh, come on, clap those hands. Uh, lift those hands in the air. Uh, thank God for the power uh, who's living on uh, the inside of you. Shows us uh, that there's power on the inside, uh, power that changes us uh, from what we used to be uh, uh, to what God is changing us into. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, uh, If any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. Uh, old things are passed away. Uh, behold, all things uh, have become. A Christ in us, living in us, he begins to influence how we live. We ought to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we ought to love our neighbor as ourselves. 
last week we looked at Peter. Uh, we can see in Peter's life uh, how God changed Peter uh, from one thing uh, to another thing. Uh, you remember we talked about Peter uh, impetuous, uh, acting quickly uh, without a lot of thought. Uh, in old terms, my parents used to use uh, uh, Peter used to fly off the handle. Uh, he leaped before he looked up. And because of Peter's impetuousness, uh, his relationship with Jesus uh, was up and down. Uh, but we know that Peter was a fisherman. Uh, you heard me talk about the fact uh, that when God called Peter, uh, God told Peter, come, uh, and I will make you fishers of men. Uh, but Peter was on the inner circle uh, uh, that Jesus had. Uh, it was the inner circle of Peter, James, and John. Uh, there at the transfiguration. He was there uh, at the raising of Jairus' daughter. He was there uh, at the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, it was Peter who recognized uh, uh, that Jesus was the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. Uh, and because of that profession of faith, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that Jesus said, Peter, uh, I call you Cephas Rock, uh, Little Rock. Uh, and because of that faith, uh, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Uh, shall not prevail against him. It was Peter who walked on water. It was Peter who caught the miracle draw of fishing. You remember that story? They were fishing on the wrong side of the boat. And when they threw it on the other side of the boat, at the Lord's instructions, the Bible said they caught a miracle, a catch of fish. It was Peter who said uh, uh, that Jesus, I'll never uh, uh, betray you. Uh, I will stand with you. Uh, uh, but Jesus told Peter uh, uh, that the time will come you will deny me uh, uh, three times. Uh, and the Bible lets us know that when Peter uh, was confronted uh, uh, with the Jesus was, uh, uh, that he denied the Lord uh, uh, three times. Uh, he was broken in spirit. Uh, he was so broken that he went back to fishing. Uh, he went back to his old lifestyle. Uh, uh, but like earth, wind, and fire reminds us, uh, something happened uh, along the way. Uh, with me. Something happened along the way. After going back to fishing, the Bible says that Peter and about 120 more believers were in an upper room. They were waiting for the promise. The promise of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there was a sound as a mighty rushing wind, and there appeared cloven tongues of fire, and rested upon all of their heads, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And now we see a difference in impetuous Peter. In chapter 2, he preaches. And 3,000 were saved. In chapter 3, he encounters a paralyzed man at the gate called Beautiful. The man was begging for arms. And when Peter and confronted the man, told the man, look on us. Silver and gold have I not. But such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man, the Bible said that Peter extended his hand to the man, pulled the man up. The man's ankle bones received strength. And the man began to walk. The man began 
to leap and to jump and to run and to praise God. And in this fifth chapter, as I come to a close, the Bible tells us that the apostles were now performing many signs and wonders among the people. As a result, but the people began to bring the sick people out into the streets on beds and on mats. And in order that Peter's shadow might fall across them as he passed by. Come on, look at this. They heard about the apostles doing all those miracles. And now they had so much faith in what they said was, I don't need anybody to touch me. All I need is to get into the shadow of Peter. And I believe I'll be healed. I believe I'll be made whole. I come to tell you today, as you live, you don't need to be in the church building or to get your miracle. You don't need to be around a whole lot of folk or to get your miracle today. He's worthy. He's worthy. 
God has all power in his hands. And right where you are, right where you sit, right where you with uplifted hands, I'm believing if you just have the faith enough just to lift up those hands, that God's got the power to give you just what you're looking for. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. Creatures here below. Praise him above. Ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Look at the power that God granted apostles. That the people felt like all they had to do was get in the shadow of Peter and they would be healed. They brought sick folk from all of the towns around Jerusalem. They brought sick folk into Jerusalem because the word got out. And the people brought the sick out on stretchers, out on beds, out on couches in order that they might get their healing. And those who were vexed with demons, those demons were released, exercised. They were delivered from the power of the enemy today. I'm claiming that for you today. I'm claiming that for you today. That all you need is a little bit of faith. You have some, somebody that's more powerful than a shadow. You have somebody who's got more strength than a shadow. Uh, you've got God himself living on the inside of you. Thank you for Jesus today. Maybe there's somebody, maybe there's somebody who's not saved today. Maybe you've never accepted of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you were to die today, you don't know where you would go. You don't know if you would go to heaven. Well, I want you to go to heaven. And, and all you have to do is pray with me this prayer of salvation. Pray what we call a prayer of salvation. And, and as you pray with me, you're not talking to me, but you're talking to, uh, you're talking to God. And the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's what the scripture teaches. And as we pray, as we pray right now, I want you to talk to God. I want you to be saved today. Come on, let's pray. God, I am a sinner. Forgive me for the sins that I have committed. I'm sorry. Please, Jesus, come into my heart. Save my soul today. I thank you, Jesus, that you lived, that you walked this earth, you died on the cross, they put you in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, you rose again with all power in your hands. You went back to your father and one day you're coming back for me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul today. Help me live a committed life. Help me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that prayer. You are saved and you are in heaven. And I'm praying that you would call and let us know uh, that you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. St. John, AMB Church, 5501, Rock Creek Lane. Beach, Virginia. Come on, Google that. Write us. Let us know you accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Amen. The Bible says that the angels of heaven are 
one sinner that comes to repentance yes. and because you accepted Christ the angels in heaven are rejoicing even right now thank God for your decision I pray that you would continue uh, to worship with us continue to pray for us as we serve the Lord this being the first Sunday of the month is our communion Sunday and at this time, we are going to prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper. I pray that you would get your, your uh, juice and your cracker. Amen. If you don't have what we usually do in church, get, just get a cracker. Just get juice. Uh, because what the Lord says is, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And as long as we are doing it in remembrance of him, then I believe that God is, is, is sanctifying what we do. God is pleased with it because we do want to remember what the Lord Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen. I'll give you a, a minute to prepare. Come on, run, get some juice. Run, get that cracker. And we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. Amen. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from his forth and his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray together the general confession. Almighty God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against our divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and brilliantly magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we shall in all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of glory. Glory be to thee, O most high. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our
unto his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, of course, by our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, and remembers of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as drink it in remembrance of me. As we get, as you get your cup and your juice, amen, we're going to take it together, amen. All of us will take it together, amen. Praise the Lord. The body of our Lord and Savior is Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. blood of Jesus, shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Take and drink. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, Power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Come on, one more time. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. Wonder working power, the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen god bless you today uh we want to thank god for your giving amen we would ask that you would continue your faithful giving to uh, this ministry to the New St. John Church your finances uh, because we need to continue to pay our bills. We need to continue uh, to do the work of the kingdom. And I want to thank so many of you who have been faithful in your giving to the church. Amen. Even though we have not met 
uh, as a body physically, uh, but you've still held on to your commitment to support the church with your finances. I'm asking today, even if you're not a member of the church, you can still send uh, something to help the ministry here. Amen. And, uh, this ministry has been a blessing to you. Amen. Just send a love offering. Amen. It doesn't have to be that much, but if you would just send it, help us uh, to support the ministry here at New St. John. I've committed until we go back to I'm going to give at least another $25 every pay and for, uh, for the support of uh, the ministry at New St. John. God's been good to us. Amen. I mean, we still have food on our tables and clothes on our backs. Uh, God has still helped us to pay our bills. God's been good to us. And because God has been good to us, we ought to return a portion of that back to God. Amen. Uh, so we'd ask you to do that, and thank you. Thank you for supporting uh, the new St. John ministry. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen and amen and amen. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank God for the First Lady. Uh, she wasn't as loud today as she usually is, but that's all right. I, uh, she was still clapping her hands. Amen. And I could hear under her, under her voice, amen, uh, trying to help the pastor preach a little bit today, amen. But we thank God for her, we thank God for that he took her through Monday. Uh, I tell you, uh, we were just waiting on eggshells to, uh, to hear from the doctors, and uh, we were glad when she was able to uh, come on out, come on back home, and uh, she's doing well. Continue to pray for her. I want to thank the pastor's aid for sending flowers. Uh, the pastor's aid, amen, for sending flowers. Sister Carol, amen, for sending flowers uh, to brighten up her day. And for all of you uh, who sent text messages and made phone calls, we want to thank you uh, for all of your love and all of your support uh, to uh, the both of us. At this time, if all hearts and minds are clear, I mean, we're, we're going to be dismissed. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Wednesday for Bible study 12 noon. God bless you. Have a great day.